Hey everyone, Dave Martin here. If you're like me, you're probably going crazy from self-isolation for coronavirus. So I'm going to drop a few extra videos just of some modeling that I'm doing in preparation for other videos. In a week or so, I'm going to have a bunch of pro program videos drop. And for the next one that I'm making, I have to make some alterations to a little nut over here. So I'm going to open it up and make the changes in here. I need to have a family table in this part. So I'm just going to show you some preparation work that I do in Creo Parametric. In order to make this as a family table, first I'm going to change some of the dimensions and features. Let me go to the first feature in here. I will click the Edit Dimensions button. Let's go to the Tools tab and switch dimensions. And here we have the D2 dimension. I'm going to change the name of that one to Hex Size just so that's a little easier to remember. And let's go to the cut and do the same thing. The main controlling dimension is going to be this D5 dimension. And I'm just gonna call that one the diameter. So that is good. Let me switch dimensions again. That's a value of two. With the protrusion, this is going to be a value of two. So I wanna control the size of the heck hex as a function of the size of the cut. So let's put in a relation for that. I'll click on relations and there are none in this model. Let me start off with a comment line and I'll just put control size of hex as a function of diameter. And then go to a blank line. Let's select the protrusion feature and I will select the hex size that is the dependent variable and that's going to be equal to the diameter so that's good that way I just have to change the diameter and the rest of the hex will update let's click OK out of the relations dialog box the next thing I'm just going to clean up some of the names of the features so let's call this the hex extrude just to make the model user-friendly and then here is the center. I'll call it hole, even though it's really a cut. And now we have a couple of chamfers in here. Let me repaint the screen. I've got a chamfer up at the top, and then we've got a second chamfer over here. There's really no need for there to be two different features in here. So I'm going to delete the second one and click the OK button. And let's select the chamfer and edit definition. And wow, look at this, holy cow. This is a really old model. This is one of the old uh, model dialog boxes used to get in Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier. I do not like this at all. Let me cancel out of here. I'm just gonna get rid of that chamfer entirely. Let me see what the dimension is in here. So let's see, yes. 0.17, kind of an odd number in there for the size of that chamfer. Let's delete this and put in sort of a newer chamfer. Let's go to the chamfer command and let's see, I want to pick these different edges in here. Uh, let me go to the set tab. Let's see, I wonder if I can do loop surfaces. Let me select the surface and then shift key and then select that edge. Nah, it's not letting me. Let me remove that in there. Oh well, it's only 12 picks. Just gonna hold down the control key and select those over there. And let's do the same thing for the bottom. There we go, and let's use a value of 0.2. And then hit the, actually 0.2, that's gonna be a little too. Let's see, I'm gonna hit the check mark. I'll, I'll leave it for a value of 0.2 in here. I'm actually gonna, I'm thinking about my family table. I'm gonna start out, this is a really big nut, but I'm gonna have them start at a diameter of 0.25, and I think that chamfer is going to be too big for the smaller chamfers. 
are for the smaller members of the family table. So let's go back to the relations. I can use a relation to control that. Let's go to relations and let's see, control size of chamfer. And let's see, I'm going to put it in if then else. If diameter is less than one, then we're going to have, let's see, the chamfer. What is the dimension? It's the D9 dimension. Let's have D9 to be equal to, I don't know, 0 0.05. And then end if. So that is good for that one. Let's click the OK button out of here. And you know what? I bet if I edit definition of the round, I'm going to get one of those. Oh, no. Actually, we have a regular ribbon interface for the round. That's interesting that the chamfer brought up the old interface. All right. That is good. For some reason, if I want the chamfer back to where it was, I can drag it up in the model tree. and might as well change the name of this feature just so that looks nice like all the other features. So there we have the feature called round. All right. Let's make our family table. Let's go to the model intent overflow menu and then choose family table. And the, let's see, I'm going to add as a column in here. Let me pick this dimension. I think this is really the only, nah, you know what, I'm actually going to have another one in here as well. Let's select the main extrude. Maybe I want to have some with different heights. Let me select this one over here. That is the height dimension. Let me click OK out of here. I'm going to hit OK for a second because I'm going to select that dimension. Let me just make sure it's selectable. And let's change this one. Let's call that one height. Just so that it appears that way in the family table dialog box. All right, so there I have diameter, there I have height, nice and easy. All right, so let's see, I am going to create my first instance and I'm gonna call this one, let's see, this is gonna be zero underscore two five. And let's see, it's going to have a diameter of 0.25. And for this one, I think, let's see, what's, what would be a good value for that? Let's try 0.25 as well. That's good. Let's verify. And I just want to be able to select this one and then see what it looks like. Yeah, not bad. So that's good for that one. And now I am going to create another instance with the same values as the generic. Actually, let's make it one in one. Let's create an instance. And let's see. I'm going to call this one nut underscore one zero zero and let's make that a value of one and height of one let's select this one and let's see let's use the patternize functionality on this one i will select it and then use this icon over here which is called patternize or edit with increments. And I'm going to leave, let's see, the only thing that I want to vary is going to be the diameter. And the increment that I want to use is a quarter inch. And let's see, how many of these do I want? In the first direction, let's crank up the quantity. Well, let's see if I want them up to about four inches. trying to think that would actually be like 17. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, let me click the OK button. And there we go. Starts at a value of 1. 
and then 1.25 going up by a quarter inch. That's good for that. Let's take this one and I'm going to patternize this. And let's see, I want, let's see, I have a 0.25 and then let's see, just trying to do math real quick. I don't know. Uh, going up by 16ths of an inch. Let's try 14. And actually, it's just the diameter. And the diameter increment, I want that to be. Wait, do I want to go by 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch? 16th of an inch. Let's go 0 0.0625. Hit the enter key. Uh, 14 instances in here. Everything looks good there. I will click the OK button. And eh, I got a couple extra ones. No problem. Let's delete that one oops let me just put some text in there and let's see oops let's see let's delete row yes select this one delete row yes and this one let's delete that row uh, let's see I think once I get over this I want to Oops. There we go. Uh, let's see. I'm going to then let's take this and edit this in Excel. File, edit with Excel. All right. And I'm going to put a pause in here while I just do some Excel work and then come back and show you what I've got at the end all right that is good let's try to exit out of here let's see let's do save and then exit and take a look at the family table let's see looks like I do have a couple extra ones in here let's delete this row and there I have them and let's see. Let's delete this row. And just make this look like the other ones. All right, that is good. Now let's verify. Hit the verify button. Alright, all of these succeeded. That looks good. Let's close out of here and then click the OK button out of here. Save my work. I get this warning because I have that config.pro option from Creo 5 that you're not supposed to use. Uh, just FYI, if I go to File Options Configuration Editor, uh, where is... Well, that was weird. Um, let's see... This enable embedded component demo. I have that one turned on. I really need to stop using that. But let's click the cancel button out of there. And I've got, let's see, I've saved this one. Let me close this. I don't need that assembly in there. All right, so now I've got the different nuts in here. And let me select this one. And I can right click and choose the replace button. And I'm going to replace by a family table member. I'll hit the open button. And this should be this one over here. Click the OK button and then click OK. And it looks the same as before, but now I'm just using the family table instance. Let me go to this subassembly, which also uses the nut. And I'm going to right mouse click and hold and choose replace again by family table. Let me hit the open button and grab the same instance as before. And click OK. And there you have just a little modeling, some cleanup work on a part, and then creating a family table. So I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also another note, only 20% of my viewers are actually subscribed to my channel. So hey, if you're watching and you're not subscribed, 
please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. Thank you very much.